So today's video is about multiplying decimals. So how do you multiply decimals? Well the first step is to ignore the decimal and multiply the two numbers together using the same steps you have always used for multiplication. Your second step is to count how many numbers are behind the decimal for each factor in the problem. Remember the factor factors are the two numbers that are being multiplied together. Then step three, you're going to add up how many numbers both factors have after the decimal. And then this tells you how many numbers should be after the decimal in your answer. So let's do an example. We want to find the product of 3 and 5 tenths times 2 and 1 tenth. Your first step is to ignore the decimal and multiply the two numbers together using the same steps you've always used. And even when you're lining the numbers up, you're still going to line them up basically the same way you've always lined the numbers up. So first you're going to put your 3.5 or 3.5 on top and then your 2 and 1 tenth on the bottom. And then you're just going to literally ignore the decimal, pretend it's not there, and then just multiply. 1 times 5, which gives you 5, and then 1 times 3 gives you 3. Then I put my placeholder, and then 2 times 1 gives me 10, bring the 0 down, carry the 1. 3 times 2 gives you 6, and then add 1, and you get 7. And then again, add these numbers together, and that will give you 735. So like I said, before you do anything, you just ignore the decimal, pretend it's not there. Your second step is to count how many numbers are behind the decimal for each factor in the problem. So again, I'm going to pull my problem back up that we did, and then I'm looking only at what's behind the decimal in my factor. So in my first factor, I look and see how many numbers are behind the decimal, and I see that there is one number behind the decimal. Then I look at my second factor, and again I see how many numbers are behind the decimal, and I see that there's one number behind the decimal. Then I'm going to actually take these two numbers and add them together. So in my third step, I'm going to add up how many numbers both factors have after the decimal. And then this is going to tell me, tell me how many numbers should be in my answer. So again, my problem, I know that there's one number behind the decimal in my first factor. And I know that there is one number behind the decimal in my second factor. And again, we're going to add these up, which means that there should be two numbers behind the decimal in my answer. So I'm literally going to start from the end of the number and move the decimal in two places so that I end up with two numbers behind the decimal in my answer. So then that gives me a final answer of 7 and 35 hundredths. So that means our final answer, 3 and 5 tenths times 2 and 1 tenths, gives me 7 and 35 hundredths. Now you can follow these same steps if you decide to use the lattice or the grid method, because I know some of you don't use the standard method for multiplication. And remember, the first step is to ignore the decimal and multiply, so you're going to use that method that you use, the lattice or the grid that you're comfortable with, and then follow steps 2 and 3 to figure out where to place the decimal. So just to give you an example, we're going to look at the same problem with the lattice and the grid method. So with the grid method, I know you would set it up based on place value. Again, you're going to ignore that decimal. So you're going to pretend that this is 35 and that this is 21. So I would do 30 and 5, 20 and 1. Then I'm going to basically multiply my boxes. And those of you who do the grid method know how this works. Well, if my thing would stop, pop up, pop up. Well, it doesn't want to pop up for me, so let me write it in. So we know that 30 times 20 would give us 600. Let's try this. And then we know that 30 times 1 would give us 30. And then we know that 20 times 5 would give us 100. And then we know that 5 times 1 would give us 5. So we'll just drag it in like that. So now that I've done the boxes for my grid method, again, my next step 
is to do step two and three. And remember, step two and three is where you're basically figuring out how many places behind the decimal do we need to move our answer. So if I look at my first number, I know that I've got one place behind the decimal in my first factor, and I've got one place behind the decimal in my second factor, which means I have to move the decimal two places in my answer. So again, I got an answer of 735 when I added up the boxes. So again, I'm going to move the decimal two places from the back of the number, which gives me a final answer of 7 and 35 hundredths. If you were to do the lattice method, those of you who are comfortable with that method, again, you would set up your box, you would do the lattice method, and again, you're going to use steps two and three. So again, I end up with an answer of 735, and I look at my two factors, and I have one number behind the factor in my first number, one number behind the decimal in my second factor, and then I'm going to move the decimal two places, which again gives me an answer of 7 and 35 hundredths. So what that means is, even if you were to use the lattice or the grid method, you can still use those methods and multiply decimals. So now I want to find the product of 2 and 16 hundredths times 3 and 2 tenths. Again, if I'm using the standard method, I'm going to ignore the decimal and set up my multiplication problem just like I always would. Ignore, pretend the decimal is not there, and just multiply. So I know when I multiply 2 times uh, 6, it gives me 12. And then 2 times 1 gives me 2. Carry the 1, you get 3. Then 2 times 2 gives me 4. Then I put my, excuse me, then I put my placeholder. 3 times 6 gives me 18, carry the 1, 3 times 1 gives me 3, plus 1 gives me 4, and then 3 times 2 gives me 6. Then I add those numbers together. Now I look at my factors to see how many places are behind the decimal. So my first factor, there are two places behind the decimal. In my second factor, there's one place behind the decimal. And then we're going to add those two numbers up, which means there should be three places in my answer. So again, I'm going to start from the back of the number and move one, two, three places in so that I have three places behind the decimal. And what that basically gives me is 6 and 912 thousandths. So that means 2 and 16 hundredths times 3 and 2 tenths equals 6 and 912 thousandths. If I were to use the lattice method, again, I've set up my boxes. I've done the multiplication using the lattice method. And then... I need again to look at my numbers to see where my decimal should go. So with 2 and 16 hundredths, again, there's two places after the decimal. 3 and 2 tenths, there's one place after the decimal. I add them together, which means there should be three places in my answer. So again, I have this 600, I mean 6,912 as my answer. So I've got to move that decimal from the back of the number three places. And again, it gives me an answer of 6 and 912 thousandths. I'll do the same thing if I'm doing the grid method. So I've set up my boxes. I've done my grid method. I've added up all the numbers in my boxes. Again, I got 6,912. So again, I'm looking at my two factors. I'm seeing how many numbers are behind the decimal. Well, 2 and 16 hundredths has two places behind the decimals. 3 and 2 tenths has one place. See how basically I'm doing the same thing again and again. I'm, I'm doing the multiplication the way I've always done it, and then I'm looking at the factors to see how many numbers are behind the decimal so that I can find it in my answer. And I'm doing that no matter what method I use. So again, I'm going to move my decimal three places in my answer. Again, I end up with 6,912, but I've got to move that decimal from the back three places, one, two, three. And so now again, my answer is 6 and 912 thousandths. Here are some additional examples. Again, we're just looking at these examples to see how we put the decimal in. Because remember, everything else about the multiplication is the same. So with this one, I moved it two decimal places. It was one decimal, so then there were three decimal places in my answer. Then here, there were two decimal places in the first, one decimal place in the second. So I moved it three in my answer. On this problem, there were two decimal places in the first factor, two decimal places in the second factor, so I had to move it four decimal places in my answer. 
this problem here, there's two decimal places in the first factor, two decimal places in the second, which means I have to move the decimal four places. And if you notice, there's only three numbers in the answer. So see how they moved one, two, three, four, and you end up with this empty spot here. And the question is, well, what do you do with that empty spot? Well, you have to put a placeholder in. So what you would do is you would actually add a zero. So that means my final answer for this number would be 258 ten thousand. So I've got to put that zero as a placeholder. So if it's telling you if the factors, if you add the factors up and you have to move it a certain number of places, even if you don't have enough numbers, you still move it that number of places. You just have to put a zero. So I always say where there's an empty hump, put a zero. So if we had an empty, we had an empty hump here and we had to put in a zero. So remember with multiplication, you're going to multiply the way you always multiplied. Ignore the decimal and just multiply. And then after you do that, then you're going to look at the factors, which are the two numbers being multiplied, to see how many numbers are behind the decimal. And then that tells you where the decimal goes in your answer. Don't forget to teach the tiger something that you learned in today's video.